This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Miracle of multiplication. Miracle of multiplication. Is it possible that the things we have can multiply? The answer is yes. Multiplication occurs in the atmosphere of faith. I said multiplication occurs in the atmosphere of faith. It is in the atmosphere of faith that multiplication can happen. Faith atmosphere is the atmosphere where we can experience miraculous. I said faith atmosphere is the atmosphere where we can experience the miraculous. If you want to see the miraculous, you, you need to create an atmosphere of faith, not an atmosphere of worry, not an atmosphere of doubt, not an atmosphere of unbelief, but an atmosphere of faith. And what does it take to create an atmosphere of faith? Number one, hearing what God is saying. Hearing what God is saying. Number two, believe what God is saying. Number three, declare what God has said. If you're going to create an atmosphere of faith, it begins with hearing what God is saying. Hearing what God is saying. Romans 10, 17. So then faith connect by hearing. Hearing what God is saying. It's not just what is happening, but hearing what God is saying. Not just what you feel. You know, because sometimes we allow our feeling to distract us from believing in our righteousness. Our righteousness is not based on our feeling. Righteousness is not a feeling. Oh, I didn't feel good today. Maybe God have left me. God doesn't leave you. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you till the end of the world. So maybe you, you did something you shouldn't have done, or you said something you shouldn't have said, and then the enemy brings guilt and condemnation to make you believe that God is no longer with you. No, God is with you. God is not abandoning you for shortcoming. God is not leaving you because you missed the mark. No, he's not. We don't do that to our children. Let's take, for instance, your baby wets his clothes. You know, can you just say, oh, Please, I'm throwing this baby away. The police will arrest you. The police will say, you, you got to wash that baby, take care of that baby. But can I say this to you? We'll create an atmosphere of faith by hearing what God is saying. Number two, by believing what God has said. I can hear what God is saying, but never believe what God has said. I can hear what God is saying, but never believe what God has said. Believing is what leads to receiving. I cannot truly receive when I don't believe. I cannot receive when I don't believe. I have to believe before I can receive, I have to believe before I can receive. So if I'm going to be a receiver, I have to first be a believer. So to create an atmosphere of faith, we need to hear the word of God. Number two, we need to believe the word of God. And number three, we have to declare the word of God. It is so important that hearing you know, do you know that your faith can go from here to here? Yes, yes. Anybody, 
Anybody. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be here in faith this week. Watch my hands. This is where you are in faith this week, last week. And someone's faith can drop to this place. And I'll tell you the reason for that. When you start worrying about things, you are opening door for your faith to be weakened by that thing. You're worrying about things. Now, the worry opens door for doubt. So the faith that was here has dropped. So for me to maintain faith stability, I have to maintain a life of joy. Well, yes. To maintain faith stability, I have to maintain joy. If I don't maintain joy, I keep worrying about this, keep worrying about this. What happens is that I am putting my faith, unnecessary pressure on my faith. Why? Because worry, doubt, and unbelief makes you to do things you're not supposed to do. Because you want it your way. You thought it could have just happened. He said, after you have done the will of God, you have a need of patience. How many people have read that scripture? After you have done the will of God. You didn't do your will. You didn't do what you want to do. He said, you have a need of patience. Then you see someone who is not even committed like you, is prospering, is succeeding, is excelling. You say, oh God, Apostle, look at this person. I used to know her. She was, she's not even strong in the faith. Look at what the Lord is doing for them. You know, a problem, like someone said, you have no problem until you saw someone you're comparing yourself to. You are all right all this way. <laughs> You are very happy. You are very okay with everything until you saw someone, you started comparing. You know, some of us like to do this check and balance, you know. I'm trying to check her out. She's trying to check me out. Have they gotten the kind of car I have? Have they gotten the kind of things I have? They be- <laughs> oh, God, flesh is fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's why you just start getting worried. You are happy. You are glad. You have you are enjoying the Holy Ghost until you start doing that. And that is what dilutes our faith work. Then we start questioning God, Lord, how long will it be? Lord, how long? Why are you asking God how long? Lord, I'm tired of waiting on you. Most of us could say things like that. Lord, is these things you're telling me, is it true? <laughs> now we're angry. <laughs> you know, sometimes something happens in our house. They say, Isaac is angry. <laughs> they say, Isaac is angry. That's all this. Is. Isaac is angry. I said, what's the problem? Then he frowns his face. I said, what's the problem? <laughs> and some of us behave that way to God. We're angry. <laughs> we're angry. And God is asking, what's the problem? Nothing. Have you ever asked someone? (laughs) Have you ever been in a situation where you are asking someone, something happened, they said, nothing. (laughs) So why all of this show? If it's nothing, why not be happy? He said, nothing. There is something. Something is going on. You can't say nothing. You don't want to be frank. You don't want to be true to the whole situation. Nothing. Everything is okay. It's not okay. Express it and feel free. Release it. Release it. Hallelujah. (laughs) I've seen people telling you nothing, but their attitude is opposite. The attitude just change. Their behavior just change. Things just change. Oh my God. What is going on? Nothing. They're angry. The best way they can communicate their anger is to say nothing. (laughs) Pray for them. (laughs) Pray for them. So so our faith sometimes can just 
uh, we, we can put ourselves in that situation where we become so frustrated. And often I say to people that frustration is a choice. You know what frustrates you can someone else is not frustrated. You know, someone sent me a text this afternoon and said, uh, some people are criticizing you that you preach very long. <laughs> so, please, I want to start doing 10-minute service. <laughs> That's... I'm praying to God to help me stop. I need to stop. <laughs> you know, I think everybody's like me. <laughs> they said they're sending me text that they say you preach too long. So I'm uh, maybe after this service, I mean, there's uh, Martin, all of you will just pray for me. God help apostle. <laughs> So I'm trying to preach for 10 minutes, but I don't know how I'm going to do that. Wow. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you're hungry for God, you want more. <laughs> Praise God. When, when you're <laughs> oh God, you want more. But I know everybody is not that hungry. Everybody is not that hungry. It's not everyone who wants to have their, the, the word of God come to them like that. So some people just say, give me in bed. So we're looking at a miracle of multiplication. For things to multiply around you, you have to stay in faith. Panic brings pressure. Faith brings rest. Panic brings pressure. Faith brings rest. Panic. When, when, when you start to panic, it comes with pressure. Panic comes with pressure. You're, you're trusting God for something. You're believing God for something. And maybe it delayed. Panic comes with pressure. Faith comes with rest. So let's let's the scripture. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 8. In Second Kings 17, verse 8, it said, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, which belonged to Zidom, sorry, to Zidom, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Verse 10 says, So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering stick, gathering of sticks, and he called to her, and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. A little water that I may do what I may drink. Then in verse 11, and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two stick that I may go in and dress it for me and for my son that you may eat and die. Now, one of the keys to multiplication is to be seed-minded and not need-minded. I said one of the keys to multiplication is to be seed-minded and not need-minded. Now she has a need. She said, we will eat and die. We will eat and do what? And die. We're going to eat and die. So they, they, she was not making room for sowing here. So Elijah, the man of God, began to encourage her to sow. Can I say this to us today? Multiplication 
is a product of trusting God, not trusting in what you have. I said multiplication is a product of trusting God, not trusting in what you have. You see, when you trust in what you have, if God instructs you to give it, you won't. Because you trust in what you have. Multiplication occurs when you trust in God and not in what you have. Because what you have cannot change the situation. What would change the situation is to trust God's instruction. And his instruction would change the situation. When you do that instruction, his instruction will change the situation. So here, Elijah said to her in verse 13, 1 Kings 17, verse 13, and Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Another key to multiplication is putting God first, not your need. Putting God first is a strategic key in experiencing multiplication. If God does not come first, you cannot break forth. If I put God first, I'm going to make progress. Putting God first puts you in a position where greater things are going to happen. So here we saw that she was instructed to give first. If what she have is going to multiply, she needs to put God first, not her need. Whenever you put your need first, you rob yourself of the opportunity of experiencing supernatural help. Whenever you put your need first, you rob yourself of the opportunity of experiencing supernatural help. You know, sometimes God could say, give me an offering, or give me your first fruit offering, or do this, or do that. Maybe just drop a word in your heart. There are many things that can make us a reason our way out of it. Obeying God will require you to do it quickly. Once we delay, most times we miss out. It has happened to me. Okay, when this money come, okay, when this come, so I was just thinking, and I just missed the moment. Elijah instructed her to give first. Things start multiplying when God becomes your ultimate priority. That's how things multiply. If God is not your ultimate priority, it will be impossible for things to multiply around you. She was in a fixed situation. She was preparing the meal to eat and die. So there is nothing more to live for. Then the prophet came and said, share with me. That doesn't make sense. But your way out of every situation is to exalt God's word above the situation. That's a remarkable word for somebody. Your way out of any situation is to exalt God's word above the situation. Your way out of any situation is to exalt God's word above the situation. So no matter what you're dealing with right now, you got to find out what God is saying. If you don't find out what God is saying, all friends may distract you. So here I said in verse 11, he said, and she said she was going to fetch it. 
And he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Verse 12, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and for my son, that we may eat, uh, we may eat it and die. A lot of people are here. A lot of people are in a place where they want to eat and die. This is a mentality of poverty. I want to eat and die. There is no hope. There is no vision. The coming of Elijah brought direction to her life and her family. The, the, can I say this to you? Partnership is one of the ways you sustain your provision. Yes. Partnership is one One of the ways you sustain uh, some, the principle of partnership. If I'm, I want to see increase on my life, I need to understand what partnership. Let's pray in the spirit and say, Lord, help me to be an effective partner. I like you to pray that right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, help me to be an effective partner. Lima Saba Baba, Le Candala Blagada Baba, Lima Socotoli Blagala Baba, Le Condolobo Sacala Baba, Le Condoli Blagaba Baba, Lima Socodobo Sacada Baba, Limbo Dobo Sacandala Blagada Baba, Limbo Dobo Sacandali Blacandala Baba, Rimbo Secatalibra Cababa. Help me to be an effective partner in the kingdom. Help me to be an effective partner in the kingdom. Rambrosa. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. Look at this woman here. She had no vision to live, to succeed. All she was seeing was death. All she was seeing was problem. All she was seeing was limitation. All she was seeing was inability. When Elijah came, life came. When Elijah came, direction for living came. When Elijah came, there was a release of prophetic instruction. What to do that would change the situation? You know, I have someone here, sometimes asking ask my pastor, what is God saying? And I like to hear things like that because sometimes God can be saying something and maybe we're just quiet. <laughs> what, what is God saying? Because sometimes God can be saying something that could change your in the next seconds and this person can just be looking at you. You couldn't say it. You know, sometimes we, we want to get it from God, which is very good. But sometimes God could give people a word for you and say, tell him to do this. Do you know it took Elijah boldness to say that to that woman? Someone told you she will eat and die. And you are not asking her for the bread. Me, I wouldn't do that. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you know what it means to go share your meal with the going to the widow to share her meal and said, Can you give me first? You know, in the first place, I may think that. People will think I'm greedy. People will think I'm funny. How can you go to the widow and ask her for bread, for something? That is not the right thing to do. Listen to this. We have to be bold to do what is right, even when it's not convenient for our flesh. Wow, that's the word. We have to be bold to do what is right, even when it's not convenient for this guy. This flesh is saying, no, 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 no. Wait, you can't do this. And Elijah said to her, let's just make something for me to eat. And look at what he said here in verse 13. He said, and Elijah said unto her, fear not. Fear is one of the reasons we compromise principles. 
Fear is the reason why we don't step out and do what will change our life. We are afraid that it will not work. We are afraid it won't go through. We are afraid it's not going to happen for me. And the spirit of fear keeps you away from receiving. He said, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. Wow. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Let me say this to us. Whenever we put God first, we're investing into a future that cannot be destroyed. Whenever we put God first, we are investing into a future that cannot be destroyed. Whenever we put God first, we are empowering our destiny. One of the ways you empower your destiny, one of the ways you succeed in life is to put God first. Multiplication happens in the atmosphere where people put God first. Things will start increasing. Business opportunity, business ideas, things will start happening. When you put God first, you are taking a step in the direction of multiplication. So create a faith atmosphere by hearing what God is saying. Number two, by believing what God is saying. And number three, by declaring what God is saying. And don't forget that putting God first is an investment. And sometimes it may not be convenient, but it's worth it. And Elijah said to her, give me first to eat. That suggests putting God first. It is not convenient, but it's going to bring my change. And then Elijah began to prophesy begin to bring forth word of wisdom of what God will do. And something amazing begin to break out in that situation. Can I say this to you? Multiplication is possible when God is your first priority. Exalting your need will take you off the will of God. Exalting God will help you to resolve your needs. And I wanted to trust God, hearing what he's saying, believing what he's saying, declaring what he's saying. I have an expectation. That's the last point I'm going to close. I will say that, then I'll talk about Thanksgiving. Maybe the next 10 minutes I'll be true. Expectation. Do you have an expectation that something good is about to happen? Worry is not expectation. Those who worry don't expect. But when you have an expectation, big things begin to happen. Miracles break forth in the atmosphere of expectation. That's where you start seeing miracles. In the atmosphere of where? In the atmosphere of expectation, miracles start happening. If you want to see manifestation, it happens in the atmosphere of expectation. Then Jesus did something in John Gospel chapter 6. He has this crowd to feed, but there was not much resources. And someone said there is a lad here with five belly loaves and two small fishes. And Jesus lifted up the bread and gave thanks. Now that takes you to the last point of giving thanks. Giving thanks with the seed in your hands. Giving thanks with the knowledge that God is able to exceed expectation. He started giving thanks. As he gave thanks, he stepped out in faith. And multiplication started. Don't grumble, give thanks. Don't nag, give thanks. Don't be depressed, give thanks. These are the keys that you apply. You will start seeing miracle of multiplication. Listen to God's instruction. Believe God's instruction. Allow his word to decide what you believe. And I believe that thanksgiving is the key to breaking limitations. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
We pray for everyone that is on this broadcast, on this service today. I pray you multiply their finances, you multiply their job, you multiply their provision, you multiply their expectation. I pray that those watching right now, that the power of God will come upon you, that every limitation will be broken. Every situation that is in opposition to your purpose will be broken. And I speak peace over your finances, peace over your job, over your career. In the name of Jesus, as you give God thanks, limitations will be broken. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.